Hello and welcome to Skein Your Nerds. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. You can find me on Instagram at Skein Dear. I am Skein Dear Knits as a designer on Ravelry and I also have the Ravelry group Skein Your Knits. Uh, this is not a normal knitting episode. This is a kind of off the timeline kind of episode where I'm going to show you all my works in progress. So I'm not going to go through the usual current knit alongs, my latest designs, all that stuff. If you want to find out more about that I suggest consulting the previous episode or the next episode when that comes up. Here we're just going to talk about my works in progress. It has been requested for quite some time. I often talk about how I have over like 50 works in progress laying around and I have worked through a lot of them lately and I've got the count considerably lower but I do want to put in a few disclaimers before we get into the pile of projects I currently have lined up on my bed. One, I will be excluding my own designs for various reasons. Uh, some of them have been published, some of them have yet to be published and I want to keep them secret or just whatever reason. I've just decided to just focus on other people's designs. I'm also not including uh, this like odd pile of projects I have over on my chair that is like half begun barely probably will be frogged and never bother register them on Ravelry it was just a bit of a trying out kind of thing I don't even know what's there I'm gonna have to go through them after this episode and just be like um this needle I have looked for that needle kind of thing <laughs> so thirdly I I there are three projects I can't find I don't know where they are I will be talking about them but they will be with a photo I, I, I genuinely don't know where they are I know that they're probably stored together because I used to keep them up on top of my stash shelf in this kind of uh, this bin but then I later put a plastic bag in and actually use it for trash um so I moved the project somewhere else all three of them <laughs> and I don't know where the only thing I'm confident about is that it is in this room somewhere and they are together. Right, so let's dive into this. I will be starting off by talking about my accessory projects and then we will finish off with my garment projects because that is the main bulk of my projects. Now let's start out with mittens. What we have here is the humble beginning of the Carolina Hallevorsen mittens that I started late 2018 after having had these in my queue for already a couple of years. These come from Nina Gran and Satis book that is back here actually it's about Norwegian mitten designs and it's available in English now actually which is pretty cool so the story behind this project is kind of cute there was sadly a local yarn shop of mine in Trondheim that was shutting down and so I sent my sister there to buy the last bit of Ask by Hillesvog that they stocked there because at the time they were the only shop that did and there was one yellow skein left of this and I knew I wanted to make these mittens this is the recommended yarn and colorway for these mittens and I just love how this yarn looks and then much later, my sister finds somehow a photo of these very mittens and said, I would really love those. Could you make me those? I was like, well, you have actually bought the yarn already. So yes, I can. And so they were going to be a present for my sister. And I did, I do remember having started uh, the cuffs. I think I actually made them two at a time, only to find that they were too big. So I decided to do the cuffs on a smaller needle. And I eventually, I guess I decided to do it one at a time so that I didn't have to undo two cuffs if that didn't work out. And... I'll be going up a needle size once the cuff is done and just follow the pattern as is. But I haven't done that in <laughs> four years. So, as I will be doing with all these projects, is talk about what's the hold up and will I continue? I don't know what the hold up is. I've just had to knit a lot of mittens for design purposes. That's kind of what I'm known for. And I think, yes, I will continue. These will be a gift pair for my sister whenever. You know, maybe this Christmas, maybe next Christmas, maybe for a birthday. We never know. I just haven't had the mojo to do it and that's fine. This yarn isn't intended for anything but these mittens. I had a sweater quantity of this yarn which I actually knitted a cardigan for my sister in and so it would be cool to have matching mittens. So yeah, even though I'm not actively working on them, it's been four years, I have no desire to frog it. This is what the yarn's going to become anyway. I might though put the mittens on some yarn and then leave it with a label that says the needle size. I think that might be about time so I could use these needles for something else. Next up is the beautiful Nordland hat by Sarah Huntington Burke I believe and I have this pattern in my queue forever it is gorgeous like why would you not want to make this hat and matching mittens I might add and I do but I I don't know what it is this yarn this lovely think of merino wool kind of sport weight is quite heavy to work with it's not a lot of bounce to it and I found it quite tough to work with in this hat it is working out beautifully it has got amazing stitch definition and this lovely combination of cables and color work I'm sure once this blocks out it's gonna be freaking amazing but I 
it's a hat and I started it in January 2019 and yet here we are still really not got much further it's starting to look like we might be heading to the frog pond however this is what I want to do with this yarn I have nothing else that I want to do with this yarn so I might sell it as a work in progress at some point maybe someone else wants to finish it or maybe I will feel the urge to finish it at some point I just it's so pretty it is so pretty I can I only have good things to say about the pattern and the yarn it's just like a personal hang-up kind of thing so that is the the hold up and I don't know what's gonna happen to it I've just I see no problem keeping it around but I might again Leave it on some scrap yarn so that I can free up the needles. Finally, we're gonna have to use a folder here. These are the Blorosa stockings that I really wanted to knit on lately, but I don't know where I put them. This is a Hillisvog pattern and yarn kit that I bought in a yarn shop in Trondheim. It consists of the Hillisvog Fjord yarn, or Fjord, and it's a sort of sport weight DK sock yarn. So it's got rustic non super wash wool, and an island, which is a rare find. And I was, you know, besides myself when I found it, really wanted to make these stockings. I did want to make them for myself, but my sister has been requesting uh, wool socks for a while now. So I thought maybe I'll give them to her, but I can't find the project. So I don't know what to do about that. I do think some of the hang up with these have been that the yarn is a little bit tough to work with. There's not a lot of bounce there. And I do think I made the socks a little bit too short on the fee. And I'm also kind of regretting that I put in a um, short row heel rather than the recommended heel flap and gusset but I know I'm not gonna frog all the way back to the heel and if I give it to my sister everyone's gonna be happy she's not gonna care either way I just have to finish the other one uh, but first I need to find them so that is the hold up I don't know where they are now we're at the shawls and there are five shawls that we're going to be talking about so let's get started let's dig all these out of the bags and see what we have here now it's not that long ago since you actually saw this shawl this is the trio shawl by Stricke Lisa in Norway I'm really enjoying it in this shawl. So we got one wing done already. This was just zoom, zoom, zoom through. Uh, very lovely. Does take a while, but it's all garter and stripes. So you just keep going, right? And obviously this is the body of the shawl that you start off with. This is like the whole depth of the shawl. And I'm now kind of working on the final wing here. And I even managed to find some more of the gray yarn that I definitely have too little of in my stash. And it looks like it's the same yarn, but I'm really gonna have to give a close look before I start with that uh not 100 percent sure but no worries because while the holdup has been that i didn't have enough of the light gray yarn even though i thought i did i have since managed to get my mitts on a whole skein of it so yes there will be leftovers so much for trying to use some stash yarn but there we are so yeah i will definitely be finishing this shawl it is a project from this year so you know why not i was working on it over the summer and i might even bring it out with me today because i'm just about to head out to a bit of a halloween dine out and ghost bus tour but yes i'm using lovely lovely gul yarn i adore gul they're just one of my favorite dyers they dye natural dye colored yarn and you've heard me talk about them lots before it's what i designed my haldegard cardigan and pullover with so that will definitely be finished no doubt about it another shawl i will definitely finish is nedven this is a shawl pattern by Cardin Logid, um, also known as Lickefanten, and I just zoomed through the first wing of this shawl back in May 2019. And what's the hold up? The hold up is really that the longer these short rows become, well, the more you kind of just need to focus. You, I, I can't really, you know, stop in the middle of a short row. I kind of have to focus all the way till the end. And so you kind of just need to have a moment of, of focus to do so. The other holdup is that I, for some reason, decided to make these on my only Lickia needles, which I kind of mixed feelings about, and they broke. It's probably on me, but I don't, I don't really know what happened, so I probably changed to my Knit Pro interchangeable wooden needles that are the same needles, just not as fancy branding. So that's the holdup there. I think the holdup has also been that I have had it packed away for a bit, and if I just had it in front of me, I probably wouldn't be working on it, because I can imagine wearing this a ton. It's very much my colours, my kind of yarn. I'm, I'm using Nusterbarn Merino, which is like a really light yarn, it's got 600 meters per 100 gram skeins, and it's just, it's really light and lofty, you know, it doesn't feel super thin, but you can knit some really light knits of it. People make a lot of baby knits of it, and yeah, I just, I just really like it. So that leaves us with three shawls left. The first one out is The Exploration Station by Stephen West. I have modified it quite a bit. I used 
I may add it to extra wedges so that it becomes extra big and nice wrap around. I have used my own personal favorite brioche method and made it a little bit longer if I remember correctly. I, the way I knit brioche is with a double knitting method, which means I can carry both strands at the same time. So I only have to work each row once, not twice. And I'm so proud of these color combinations. This is Madeleine Tosh, Dye Ninja, Moonlight Yarn and Debonair. And the next one is the Oracle Shawl by my friend Kristen of Full and Vine. Uh, this is made in single ply merino. I am also modifying this to combine her full circle and half circle oracle shawl to make it a three quarter so that it can wrap around the shoulders a bit more than a half circle does. And again, I'm using my own, not my own, I did not come up with it, the double knitting method of doing brioche. Then I came to the biggest lace section and that is probably where the hold up is here because you know there's purling on every other row and you know me and purling, although I have kind of warmed up to purling a little bit since I made this shawl. So that is the hold up with this one, whereas the hold up with Exploration Station is that the next section is this like slip stitch pattern that I just did not enjoy. So I think I might change it for an eyelid pattern. Thirdly, we have the Starflake shawl. This was part of a Mr. Knit Along Stephen West was doing. And again, I am doing the sort of double knitting both strands at once brioche method here. And the hold up, I guess, was just that I fell behind on the clues. I'm also using this lovely yarn that, yeah, Moon Sheep Shop yarn and Circus Tonic Handmade. This color here that Circus Tonic Handmade dyed for me and named it like a knitter in London or Norwegian in London or something like that. So, you know, it, it's very special, but what all these three shawls have in common is that they are made in superwash yarn, lovely hand dyed superwash yarn by very talented dyers. And I, looking at my shawl wearing a knitting history, I don't wear superwash shawls. So the motivation to finish these is a little bit gone because, well, they could be good gift knits, but, but I'm sure my mom would love it as a gift, you know, it could be a, a Christmas gift every year from now on, but she doesn't need that many shawls. She's already had quite a few. And so I don't know what to do. I have thought about selling all of these as works in progress and I might do that, but it's gonna be a problem with these bits of brioche that I'm using a method that most brioche knitters don't know. And so you may have to frog back this part if you are a hypothetical person who will one day buy this project. I don't know. Um, the rest is, is not modified for this one, whereas um, Exploration Station, it's already the brioche is done, so that shouldn't be a problem. It's just that there's more stitches than the pattern says because I made it bigger. And I guess with the Oracle, you could just do the last brioche section separately. So again, it is possible that these will be projects I will be selling so that someone else will complete them. And fingers crossed that they will. I haven't decided yet, but that seems like a better solution than frogging them because there's nothing else I think these yarns should become. I may still finish them because they are enjoyable knits. They simply haven't been prioritized because, you know, I am a designer. That is the thing I have to prioritize in my knitting. Um, I'm very excited about the patterns and the yarns. So that is not the issue. It's just me personally not wearing superwash shawls. I only wear the woolly woolly shawls that stay on and kind of build up around my neck, you know. Um, so that that is is just sad because like, all these shawls have very fond memories and a special story to them and all that stuff but I think they should be finished worn and loved and I don't see myself doing that but maybe maybe I'll just keep them around I don't know but for now they are just sat in project bags and that is a bit of a bummer um I could you know clear out three very big shawl projects if I just figure out where they should go um, I don't know, we'll, we'll have a think about it. So that concludes all of my accessory projects. I realize I've already recorded for about half an hour, which will probably, probably be edited down anyway, but I now have a pile of garment projects on my bed and I really should get out the door in like 20 minutes. So I don't know how this is gonna work out, but we're gonna get to it, no worries. First out is the lovely Lan Ostrand cardigan. Now this cardigan, I mean, is, <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember this. This was summer 2017 where I powered through the body of this one. You basically just heard about it once I was already down the body. I just flown through it. It's really fun. This is a pattern by Pinaguri. I used a combination of whole super soft JC Rennie. Um, this is Sager here. There is something, but it's just like a lot of different yarns here that I combined. And it's, it's great if you have leftovers and samples and, and stuff like that. So 
I got to the body very quickly and then I kind of, kind of got a bit held up on Steve Island, I'm afraid, as will happen. And what's the hold up? The hold up is that this is probably no longer my size. Um, and it, we're really just talking about an inch here, but still. I do think the sleeves might be a bit on the snug side for me, looking at them now. Maybe I need to frog them back and knit them straight for a bit. Uh, I don't know. So the hold up is the size. I also become a bit more funny about necklines lately and I don't like raglans that don't have a bit of shaping to lower the front a bit. So that is the whole up. It might be better as a gift, although this is just so my style and my colours. It will be hard to part with. So the whole up is... I mean, I was also knitting it through probably one of the hardest periods of my life, so that picking it up again does wake up some not too fond memories. But yeah, it's mostly the size that is the hold up. It is lovely though. I'm very proud of it. I just... I'm gonna keep it around. We'll finish it when we feel like it. It's just, it's been since 2017, so I'm not sure. The next garment project is the Knox Pullover by Michelle Wong. And I think I have decided that it's gonna have to hit the frog pond. Now hear me out. <laughs> it is a lovely cable knit pattern. I don't know if you can see this. This is absolutely gorgeous. Like I am so proud of the work that I have done so far here. Every time I work a row, I put it down and I look at it and admire it. So this is worked flat, is a simple pullover, and this, oh, the cable pattern here, I mean, it's it's lovely, truly. But I cast this on the beginning of 2018, so January 2018, I was in New York, I bought the yarn there and I cast it on and <laughs> at Argyle, I believe. And I was so excited about it. I used Quince & Co Lark, which is a lovely yarn, and I just, it's it's taking a while. This is a slow knit and I don't think I will finish it for that reason. I also don't enjoy knitting flat. I thought I'd give it a go with this but clearly it's not something I will likely finish. And like I said this yarn is lovely. I'm not even sure they sell it locally in London anymore. I haven't really checked so I might just save it for another special project. Another hold up with this is the size um, the pattern isn't particularly size inclusive, it does come from, you know, quite a number of years ago and if I were to wear it with the amount of positive ease that the model does, I would be uh, outside of the size range of the pattern and I know that the size I cast on then probably isn't going to give me the amount of positive ease today. So the size is off and then I would need more yarn which I don't have and it's just, I think it's just gonna have to become something else. I mean, cables famously use a lot of yarn. So if I make it something with less cables, I could do that in my size, right? I'm gonna have to frog it. I don't want to, but it's it's not gonna be finished. I just know that. I don't wanna admit it, but it's it's so beautiful. Like I'm immensely proud of the work that I've done, but it's, this is not a jumper. This is barely half a sleeve. <gasps> I swatched, guys, I swatched. <laughs> I don't get used to it, but I did, my goodness. Next up is the Mameluke. These are a pair of, I guess, underpants, knitted underpants, <laughs> that I just had to make, in part because of the Mameluke Operoide that started, well, rebellion, if you will, that started because a big yarn company that makes free pattern and likes a rip of independent designers had done exactly that to this designer and so in support of this designer we all decided to knit this it is the kind of one size fits all which you know isn't a thing so it is a free pattern you kind of figure out how to make that your size and that was a bit tough because i've never made anything like this before i mean this is the waistband i guess you're supposed to fold it double but for me it does look best when it's all the way up i will say and then you can just cast on more stitches or increase more stitches what have you and I did that, but I also did that for a very different size that I had back then. I mean, this was cast on in March 2018, but it is full, it is stretchy, um, it might still fit. So I think if I put these on a longer cable, I can actually try them on. And I'll probably find that I can still wear them and just finish it, honestly. The whole up was to figure out the length from where I go from just rib, I don't know if you can see because it's black yarn, to, to stocking it and rib on the side which is what's helping with the elasticity here. And so if I can just figure out the length to knit before we start, you know, shaping for the the bum, the crotch, all that, I think there's some short rows happening there. I could I could actually finish it. I might actually leave this one out so that I do just that. I, I have no idea what I placed all these markers for. I suppose this is where I increased. And it's black yarn, so I suppose it was nice of me to mark that, although I am able to see it. But yeah, it's, it's just full of markers which would be lovely to free up and use for something else. So 
yeah, I should really finish this one. I will finish it. I'm using Usk by Hillesfog. It's a very warm, sport weight, non-super wash, sheep woolly woolly yarn. I might leave this one out so I remember it, because now I'm holding it, and it's no longer wrapped in a plastic bag, in a project bag, in a drawer. I'm like, yeah, you know what? We will finish this one. Now for the Alicia Beth that I'm holding up very awkwardly. It's not that long ago since you saw Alicia Beth, but it is actually a very old cast one, I believe, from 2018. This is a Justina Lokowska design that I am knitting in Travel Knitter uh, BFL Nylon Sock Yarn. I got four skeins of this back in 2016 and I've been very excited to make a garment with it. And I have recently picked up this design again, which is a contiguous top-down cardigan that I'm working flat. And uh, I have done the sleeves evidence and uh, all I have to do now is just to work the body even which I can do very easily I don't have to look at the pattern and I'm hardly following it anymore anyway because I'm continuing this lovely fake cable pattern all the way down to the hem just because I want to and yeah I just put it aside for a bit because it is more of a summery wear it's not super super warm so I just thought I might feel inspired to knit it again when the weather warms up I have a few other things I gotta prioritize until then. So this is just hibernating a little bit. It's still an active work in progress. Next up is the lovely Hodgson's Joy by Sarah Hatton that I beta knitted for the Fiber Company. But the Fiber Company in the UK are very much known for their luxurious yarns and they're a lovely company. But you can imagine how besides myself I was when they were gonna announce the yarn Lore, which is a sort of DK leaning on sport weight, lamb's wool, 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 wool. I mean, it's wool and spun, um, what you call rustic and uh, non super wash, you know, very sort of velcro yarn. You can steek with it. And I got the green yarn to knit with, which is outside my comfort zone this shade of mossy green. And I powered through it. I was even allowed to put in a steek in the front to see if that was possible, which it is. I hope that's showing up. There's a lot of detail in both the yarn and the pattern, but it's a lovely with like yarns held in front. There's there's a name for this method. But. And I was very close to finishing in time and that's really what the whole loop's been with this project is that I missed the deadline. This is where it's at right now. I just need to knit up each front separately. I've already done the sleeves. I don't want to take everything out of the bag so I'm just going to hold up a photo here. Um, there's really not a whole lot left. A little bit worried whether I was sent enough yarn but I I think so. <laughs> I think if I finish this, which I am confident that I will, whenever I do it, I might gifted to someone else because looking at the amount of ease that the model is wearing is kind of the amount of ease that I would have liked but it's not the size that I have made and so it might just be a little bit more figure hugging on me not quite like it is bigger than my measurements I can I can see that but I'll have to see once I finished it and how it fits me but it would be a lovely gift for someone who likes the sort of more mossy palette more. So yes, I think I will finish it, but I'm not stressing about it. That's the main thing. <gasps> Here's another swatch. I swatched with this one too. So this project is the Rocane pullover that I took part in a knit along that Judith Stranded was doing back in, again, must have been 2018. And I was really ahead for a bit there and then I fell behind and that kind of was the hold up there. Plus it's really tough to work the front and back panels flat. It's, it's, the stitch pattern is a little bit hard to see. I'm working with very dark yarn. Um, this is the panel I'm talking about. So you can see it is a bit of a pain to, to work from the backside. You don't know quite what you're doing and end up purling where you're supposed to knit, which isn't super hard to fix, granted. And all I need to do is to finish these panels. It might look like I've already done the back, have I? I don't know. It's been a very long time since I worked on this. But once I finish that, all I have to do is pick up all the sleeves and then do the bottom rib and, and neckline. I'm like, that's the kind of thing that I finish relatively quickly. So I just think this is one of those things that is hibernating for now, but once I pick it up, I, I will do it with joy. Anyway, the designer is Christina Danae. I don't know if I pronounced that right. It ended up hibernating for a bit and that's okay. I'll pick it up when I pick it up. Oh, this pattern makes me laugh. I, <laughs> I'm getting very flustered because I'm having to get up and grab all my projects all the time and it's like a whole project getting them out of the bags, but yeah. I don't know what possessed me to think that I wanted to look like a fluffy yellow Easter chicken. I don't know if you know, but in Scandinavia, the Easter chicken is really the main ordeal. Easter hair, not so much. Chicken, oh yeah. And you know, the fluffy yellow ones, the, the little ones. So I guess maybe that's the idea here. I, I don't know. Uh, looking at it now, it feels like I might be ready to separate for the back and front, which I will do flat here because like it's just rib. It's going to be knit and pearl anyway. Uh, this is a petite knit pattern. It's called Vertical Stripes. 
and I just want to make something relatively simple in silk mohair. I got um, Chilia yarn by Filcolana, which is a lot of people's go-to commercial silk mohair yarn and I'm holding it together with, yet yeah, again, Nesteban, uh, Merino, it's very, very light yarn. So this whole garment's gonna be super light and fluffy. <laughs> I'm just not sure if it's my style. I think that's been the hold up here. And you know what, we'll see when I finish it, we'll just see. And if it isn't for me, I know a lot of people who would love to receive this it will be very much their style. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give it a wait, I think. Oh, this is one of my favorite works in progress of all. This is the Soda Cardigan by Hiroko Payne. And it is so lovely. I am it just smitten by this. But yes, it does take its sweet time to make. It is full on cable robe. This was in Lane Magazine way back when. And I will finish it, but I'm absolutely not stressing it whatsoever. It will happen when it happens. It's a nice sort of concentrate kind of, you know, you've got to be really, really focused for this one. I, a little bit of the hold up is that I am short on yarn. I have less yarn than was recommended in the pattern. But I do think I can save up on some of it by simply making it slightly less long and um, not folded over cuffs, things like that. Uh, holding a little, cutting a bit back on the rib, I think I can work around with the yarn that I have. This is yarn by Dye Ninja. It's iron weight, I believe. It's lovely charcoal and I'm just, oh, it is so, so lovely. It's looking a little bit busy on camera, but the cables really do stand out in, in person and Will I finish this? Yes. I just, I'm not pushing for time. This is a timeless piece. It's, it's all good. <laughs> I guess for me, it's when I have a yarn and I know it's going to become that project, even if I'm not stressing about finishing that project, I'm fine with having that project around because I don't see the difference between having that yarn in stash and having that project uh, in progress in stash, so to speak, because that is what the yarn's going to become. So whether it's been begun or not, I mean, having it started actually feels less stressful to me because at least I've started it, you know, it's set up, it's ready to go. And the next garment I don't have here, this is the Chateau Yant by Orsa Ticosa. I'm just gonna have to show you a photo. I don't know where I put it, but I know it's with the stocking pattern and this other pattern that I haven't talked about yet. I will be finishing it. I just started it because I knew I wanted to make a basic stocking net pattern. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well go full on with the cigarette method. And I mainly just did it because I wanted to do that yoke construction. I just love doing it. And then after that, I guess the interest kind of waned a bit and I haven't completed it. But it's nice to have because then it's just, I have a fairly straightforward stock in the pattern that I can always reach for. I mean, I would have if I could find it. <laughs> anyway, I'm using Rosy Green Cheeky Merino for this. And that might be another part of the hold up is that the pattern recommends DK weight yarn and I'm using sport weight, which yes, while the sport weight yarn I'm using is suitable for the stitch gauge, I am not getting row gauge and not getting row gauge in this kind of pattern kind of sucks because so many things in the yoke relied on me getting row gauge and I had to row back and put in more rounds in between the increases to make it work out. And in hindsight, I would have done that by also putting in more increases because I think that just would have suited me more. <laughs> but now I know, oh well. The next garment is was a test knit from 2018 that I was going to do for my friend Mina of Knitting Expat and we happen to have the exact same yarn and the exact same quantities by Green Mountain Spinnery only that Mina had the burgundy and I have the bottle green and I'm like I have a bit of burgundy envy and maybe that's part of the hold up that she's got this lovely sample in burgundy whereas I'm making in a also very amazing colour but it could have been burgundy. The other hold up is this I brought this project with me to Vogue Knitting last time I went. I thought I was going to work on it and yet I didn't touch it. I came back, I didn't touch it, unprotected. Someone's had a bit of a snack here. And I can mend it. I'm sure it's... It, I shouldn't be touching it though, but it's mendable. But it's a bummer. It, it, it is. It's just disappointing. Like, I'm going to have to continue work on a project that already has a massive hole in it. I, I can mend it. I just... And I think once I do, I might feel like continuing on this because I love this pattern. I, I find it really enjoyable. I really do want to have a garment made by my friend. Like, I mean, made by me, but designed by my friend. You know what I mean? I just feel bad for missing the deadline. Although I did tell Mina up front that, you know, I probably will miss the deadline. But if you want me to knit it and show it to people, you know, I will do that. Uh, but did I think I would miss it by four years and counting? But yeah, big shout out to me and Knitting Expat and Green Mountain Spinnery. This yarn is lovely. It is a 
woolen spun <laughs> it is a woolen spun kind of you know rustic non super yarn that kind of thing but it is so elastic and like often these yarns can be a bit tough to work with but this is the complete opposite it bounces once i finish that garment i will probably buy more of this yarn it's really nice next up is blank canvas by isolda teague now i started this from the yoke up because this is a bottom up knit but i was so curious about this yoke that i just went straight for it i love this yoke shaping this raglan shaping here it's sort of like half raglan half saddle shoulder it's really nice so what's the hold up i think i chose the wrong yarn it feels very heavy like this sleeve that i just finished just feels heavy i'm using Madeline Tosh High Twist DK Merino and the High Twist to me is more like worth the wear yarn and this is a DK weight design on a 22 stitch gauge. I think a lot of us use more sport weight on that gauge and so we're basically talking worsted weight crammed into 22 stitch gauge. Um, it's dense, it's heavy and I haven't even done the body yet. It's gonna weigh a lot but maybe that's fine. Maybe I'll just continue this one. I was prepared for saying now that I was gonna probably frog it to use this yarn on something else that uses DK yarn on a looser gauge and cast on this pattern again in a different yarn because I love both the pattern and the yarn. I'm just not sure they go that well together but now that I have it here I'm like maybe they do though. I really do like it. I love these those patterns. I think they have great fit. She always comes up with cool constructions. It's, it's always something interesting and this yarn by Madeline Tosh. This is the Lanish the Gold colorway. It, this was a treat to order from America. The next project is the last of the three projects I don't know where it is, and that is the Grand Skog Tea, i.e. Pine Forest Tea. This is the design by Renate Yates, Yates? Uh, pronunciation again. It was made for the Oslo Knitting Festival, I think, in 2019, and I really wanted to make it both to try uh, Huldra by Hillesburg for the first time. It's a really nice light fingering weight yarn bordering on lace and it's a slow knit my goodness the rib which is pretty much all i've done took so long i think that's why i lost steam on it but it's going to be lovely i think the yarn is going to be really nice in that like i think it's a 26 stitch gauge and that should be suitable but honestly it just took such a long time that's why it fell to the wayside and i've always kept it on that shelf which is why it's gone right now because i knew i would complete it once i get past the pine tree pattern at the waist is a lot of simple stock in that that i could just bring around and i think it would be a lovely oversized tee i can chuck on over a simple jumper like i'm wearing now i want it i want to finish it it just hasn't been a priority it was slower than i thought it would be but i'm not giving up on it yet next up is a project it's not that long ago since you've seen and that is the brumstonette that looks the same as when you lost oh, i had done the neckline i think i had last time as well I'm just knitting this whenever I keep it around. Like it's just a nice quick breezy knit. I've memorized the pattern pretty much. I'm constructing it uh, according to my tastes though. So I've flipped it to be top down with steaks everywhere and it's really making me want to knit it for sure. This is the kind of way that I design my own patterns. So and it does really change the integrity of the design. Like it's still got this pattern repeat. I'm following the instructions for the neckline, like all those things. It's just that, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm very familiar with the way that the pattern uh, instructs and I've done it a lot and it's the kind of typical way for Norwegian patterns. I just wanted to do something else. And yeah, I am using Hillesvog Vilja. This is their fingering weight lamb's wool yarn that I adore. It's probably one of my favorite yarns. This is also the yarn recommended in the pattern, even the colors. And just, yeah, I will, I'm very confident I will finish this. Also, I'm keeping it in this project bag that me and Kristen of Wollenvine made together. I will still say that she made it even though I May have cut out some pieces here and there. She was showing me how to make bags and so it, it's just a very kind of feel good project bag to bring with me. Maybe that's what I'll bring with me today. I really should be heading out the door. <laughs> I need to be at London Bridge in half an hour. Oh my goodness. Next up we have Nurtured by Andrea Maori. In the beginning of 2020 I worked on the Nurtured sweater and I've done one sleeve um, and I'm using Magpie... <laughs> magpie fibers in their 50% merino i think 25% cotton and 25% silk yarn that's been discontinued since but it's really lovely yarn and i am glad i chose this yarn because this pattern has you basically slip the yarn as often as you knit it pretty much so you it takes almost twice as long to make and twice as much yarn uh, so I'm glad I used the DK weight yarn instead of iron weight, even though that will make the row gauge completely off, I'm sure. And it is lovely yarn. It is soft and it's not 
too warm because of the fiber content. I think I will complete this, but I'm not rushing it. It's just not been a priority. <laughs> that's, that's the main reason. I cost a lot of things that I know I, I can't prioritize anytime soon, but figured better to have started than not. And I'm not sure if that holds true, but at least I have a sleeve done. So once I've done another sleeve, all I gotta do is the body, big deal, you know? It just, it, it does take a lot longer than you think because of all the slipping off the yarn instead of knitting it. And I put in markers for every increase for the sleeve which I don't normally do, but it's really hard to see your your increases no, with this texture pattern. So I can actually recommend that here. I don't usually need it, but for this one, it's good. Another post Vogue Knitting 2020 project that I cast on ASAP as I bought the yarn there is also in Magpie Fiber yarn. This is, I think it's Solstice 4 ply. Oh, this yarn is so nice. Oh just feeling it now. I'm like, yep, yeah, this is good. And it's this lovely mustardy yellow that... Mm. The hold up is that I did the wrong neckline for my size. Uh, so this is by Suzanne Sommer. This is the grid lines pullover, which is just a lovely design. And it has you choose between three necklines. I chose the smaller one because I do like a snug neckline, but I realized with either my roll gauge or my massive head that if you make it like this and then you do the other side, it's gonna be too snug. I probably won't get my head through. So I should have chosen the medium size, but that means I have to cast it on all over again and do it all over again, or graft it to this bit. But that is in the center front, and it's a bit of a risk. But it is where there's a garter stripe, so I could hide it in that, but still. I don't know. So it's just a bit of a bummer to have to frog all this, but it's so, so lovely. I have a feeling this might just hit the frog pond full stop. I really do want to make this garment, but the fact that I have to frog it because of my choices and do it again might just mean I lose steam. And But again, I don't know what else I would do with this yarn. I really just feel like this yarn and this pattern go so well together. I'll have a think about it, but I've had a think about it for two years already. Uh, getting close to three years now. But yeah, I am very excited about having a go at a Suzanne summer pattern. I'm very excited about working with Magpie fibrous yarn. I know they're all the rage over in America and it was really cool to get my mitts on some of their yarn. I got like three sweater quantities from them. So yeah, it's just, it's been a hold up because I made a wrong decision about the necklace and I have to live with that. Next pattern, which obviously lives in my pink hazel Christmas bag. I haven't really talked a lot about project bags, but obviously this bag goes with the theme because I am working on a Christmas card again. Now I'm modifying this so much, it doesn't even make sense to look at. I am using, as recommended, Hillesvog Sully and Hillesvog Vilje together, the pattern. So we got a lot of this happening. And I have provisionally cast on so that I can finish with the rib and be sure I get the length that I want at the end. So I'm just gonna work this all the way up till, you know, finish off the, the body. I'll probably do sticks for the armhole. And that's that. I have actually kept this project bag near me lately because I really want to start working on it again. Maybe I'll have it this Christmas or at least get a good chunk worked on it and have it ready for next, who knows? I am very excited about it. This is a design by Turi Seesta. She's one of my favorite Norwegian designers. And I, I am very excited about having it. It just hasn't been a priority. It is a little bit hard to find the Christmas knitting mojo the rest of the year. And I have, you know, been working on my own Christmas designs lately, you know, with a festive yoke pullover and cardigan. And spoiler, matching um, Charles' version soon. So that is why there's been a hold up. I really do want this project. I may not, it may not look like I got very far, but actually this took me a long time to do, but it's quicker and quicker the more you do because the pattern kind of, there's less and less pattern and more and more just simple color work around it as you go. I'm very confident about this. I'm keeping it nearby so that I will remember to work on it now that I have finished a few other more obligation knits, so. All good things to say about this. The next pattern is the Stag Head Pullover by Nora Gorn. I, of course, have to make this project for myself. I mean, you've seen what it looks like, and I am using Gilead Burgundy Yarn. Uh, this colorway is probably the best colorway that Gilead has, Gilead, sorry, De Verbe Natura has. They have it on multiple yarns of theirs. My flatmate is actually knitting with this very yarn for her boyfriend right now, and looking at it, I, it makes me want to pick up this again. All I've done is the sleeve. And the amount of progress is probably comparable to the Knox sweater. It is a little bit slow, uh, not remotely as slow <laughs> as, as Knox granted. So this is a cable sweater. I might actually finish. I might even work it flat and see what the fuss is all about. Also, I love the broken rib in this. There's broken rib in the Hodgson's Joy as well, that mossy green cardigan. And I'm, I'm all for broken rib. 
that's the sleeve of Staghead and that is all I have right now. I had a go at casting on the body earlier but something about that wasn't working out so I, I don't even remember, it's been a few years. But I know I want this, no matter when I finish. It is a, a long haul kind of project, a bit like soda. Cable garments tend to be that way for me and that's fine, I'm not rushing it. I just know that the combination of that pattern, it being a deer, hello skiing deer, um, Noragon, uh, Gilead and this particular burgundy, the Roman Nature, all of that, it has to come together. But it's a two and a half year old project, so there, bear that in mind. It's uh, it's something I maybe could prioritize a little bit more, perhaps, possibly, I'll consider. Next up is the Eleanor cardigan by Pinnagudi. Yes, yet another Pinnagudi design. Now, I have actually made this cardigan before. I used a just superwash what weight merino. This time I'm using a non-superwash Norwegian woolly wool. This is PT2, one of the sort of former phenol yarns that was merged together. Yeah. And uh, I always wanted this cardigan in a bright red. And so it's kind of just smooth sailing from now on. Um, it just hasn't been a priority again. That's really the only hold up. I could easily just go full on with the sleeves given I seem to have uh, become a little bit less sleeve islandy lately and I just finished the sleeves now. So I feel like this is going to be one of those whips that I just finished in no time once I pick it up again. It's just, it doesn't have to happen now but as you've seen lately I've done that with a lot of my whips and I don't see why not with this one. It's just plain stocking it in the back. This will definitely just go smack right into my wardrobe. It does feel like it might be a bit small but we'll see. I know I have increased a little bit more for the body to make it roomier and with button bounce and I can make them quite wide, I, I think it'll be fine. I'm very optimistic, I'm just not rushing it. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, this is one of those, mm. So this is based on a Scandinavian not today, yeah? Um, they, I don't know what they call that night shirt because they weren't really worn at night but the night was some kind of like mystical something something so people call them that. And I've only done the sleeve which took just one skein of Fienul and so I have already the other skein ready to do the other sleeve. I just haven't gone around to it because it did take its sweet time. Especially the cuff that has this like kind of cable cuff to it. I was like, not sure I understood. I don't know if I did twisted stitches or cables here. I'm not sure I understood. I, I don't quite remember. I'm going to have to actually look back at my old podcast episode and hear what I said. Uh, I really enjoy this knit though. This is... I don't know if you can see the star pattern coming up here because I'm loosening up the gauge quite a bit and the yarn is quite mild and textured but hopefully it's showing up. It is in person. So yeah I'm gonna sew in the sleeves. Watch this space. The pattern in the book really only has one size which is why I loosened up the gauge so I can make it my size. Normally I'm a bit funny about knitting patterns that don't have a size range that includes you know everyone but this one is really just to show how you can use the different charts in the book and it's really hard to grade these types of charts because they have to add up in the round and you can only do it so many times so it is one of those things I'm like okay I get it and I will probably get on the sleeve at some point when I just feel like making this kind of thing and it's nice to know that I've started and that's kind of the story there. It was one of those lockdown cast-ons and I actually didn't cast on a lot of things in lockdown so I feel okay by having you know the stag head, the Eleanor and that um, Ostrup Treja, as it's called. Designed by Vivian Höxbro, I just forgot to say. But yeah, it's a lovely shirt. I actually got the whole book just because of that shirt. I think it looks lovely and I'm very excited about when I'm going to have it. But again, I know the first leave took a while, so I'm not rushing it. It's Maybe I'm a time optimist. I, I probably am. <laughs> Another project that I look at and I wonder why am I not working on this more often. This is a really enjoyable knit and yet I haven't made a lot of progress at all. And that is Sleeve Island <laughs> by Kate Davis. I, when I first saw this design, I knew I had to make it exactly as is. I bought a kit. Uh, don't fix what's not broken. You know, just I just followed it as, as is. And this is how far I got. And it is... Weird enough, something that I feel like is going quicker and quicker because the circumference is going to be easier to work with as I go. And then you just increase from the sleeve all the way till you have the body, you have a stick at the bottom and the neck, and then you start decreasing again to the other sleeve. Literally sleeve island here, this is just one big sleeve. But it's self-striping, so it kind of just keeps you going. The chart is easily memorizable. And I just, oh, it just like, it gives Bunad vibes. It's gonna be so good, it's gonna fit right into my wardrobe. This is made in Kate Davies Malarco Tweed yarn that I've talked a lot about lately. It's just really nice and soft and it's just it's gonna work out. And we only have 
one project left, left to talk about. And this might be something that might hit the frog pond, which I'm not very excited about because I bought this yarn to make this design and this design is lovely. This is the Cat Bells Pullover by Megan Nodiker. Which again, pronunciation, I apologize, but it is lovely. This is a garter DK weight, worsted weight, uh, pullover with a very simple eyelet pattern. And I looked at it, I was like, I can do that. That will be smooth sailing. It looks very simple. It doesn't seem to matter whether you work it flat or in the round because it's, it's garter. So I might as well do it flat and, and seam and, you know, why not? And that is true. But I guess I was just hoping it would flow a bit more than it did for me because I seemed to mess up the very, very simple eyelet pattern an awful lot anyway. This is the pattern. I'm going to try and knit a bit more on it before I decide whether to frog it or not because I, I love the design. I really want to have the jumper. I want to have made the jumper. But I, it took me longer than I expected, which I guess is fine. I'll I'll try work a bit more on it and decide. It's not a very old project, so I don't feel like I have to rush it yet. I, I bought this whole sweater quantity of the Fibre Company Cumbria, worsted Cumbria, uh, and I even chose this colorway over their lovely burgundy. So I think I must have been quite invested. This is the Cat Bells colorway. It goes exactly with this design. I, I just have to reignite the motivation and start working on a bit and see how I feel. I don't want to send it to the frog pond, but I will admit already yesterday, I was looking at some other pattern that this yarn could go really well with as well. Uh, but I do want the jumper and the pattern is very nice. It's nice to follow. I really like Megan Nodiker's design, so I'll try it out a bit more. So there, we made it to the end and there is still hope that I'll make it sort of roughly, maybe a little bit late in time for my friends uh, dine out before we go on the ghost bus tour so I hope this wasn't too much of a chaotic video I'm actually quite glad that I had something I have to make after this so I didn't spend too long on each project because my goodness there are a lot of projects and this is going to be quite a lengthy video I hope if anything this video made you feel better about the probably a lot smaller works in progress count that you have so that's really what I'm here for so you feel less guilty about having what five projects how many do you have you can comment down below <laughs> If anyone else has this obscene number of works in progress, I will be very happy to hear that too. That makes me feel good. There's really nothing wrong with having one project or 50 or 100 or what have you. I mean, at, at some point it's a bit more than what's reasonable, I, w I will admit. After five or so years, I do look at my projects and I go, do I frog you? Looking at you, knock sweater. I have maybe a bit of a hard time giving up on projects and so maybe that is a a reason why I shouldn't just start them before knowing I can commit a bit more. I'll think about that, but you know, it's just knitting in the end. So I hope you enjoy this little extra video and I will see you next time. Bye.